Hey guys, I'm sorry I can't be with you this afternoon. My son is sick with strep throat, so I'm going to go home and take care of him. But you're going to be writing about your three subtopics today. So you're finishing what you started yesterday. A couple of things I want you to remember. Yesterday when we used our writer's notebooks, we kept part of the paper blank because we'll be adding an introduction next week. We'll also be adding a conclusion next week. So here on your paper, you should have started, oh, about eight lines down. Now, we're only writing about your areas right here, your subtopics. We talked about how your subtopic has to have a good little introduction all of its own. Your reader needs to know what you're talking about. So earlier I was talking to a student who was writing about soccer and her first subtopic was a rainbow. And a rainbow is a move that helps you get past other players. So when I talked to her, I said, well, if a rainbow helps you get past other players, are they other players on your own team or other players on the team you're playing against? And of course, it's people she's playing against. So then I said, well, what are those people called? And she looked at me and she said, well, they're your opponents. It's so important that we use those specific words. We don't use words like other players or just a sidekick. We want to be more specific. So she's already being specific with calling her move a rainbow, but the purpose of it is to get past an opponent. So not just another player, but an opponent. So before she explains the rainbow, she needs to introduce that she's about to talk about the rainbow. So her first sentence could be something like this. A soccer move called a rainbow can help you move past your opponents and score. Here's one way that she can introduce that she's about to explain what a rainbow is. Then she'll go through and explain what a rainbow is. I think I remember her saying that your ball needs to be between your feet. You're going to jump up and throw the ball over your head. So that's what her next sentences will say. So whatever she chooses to explain, she's not done. And even two sentences is not enough to fully explain. You need at least three to four. Three is even cutting it close. So she's gonna continue writing whatever her explanation is. Notice that I'm doing what to my lines? I am skipping lines. This is gonna make it a lot easier whenever I go back to edit and revise later on. I can easily add things, take things away. It just makes my life easier. Now let's say she's done explaining. She needed to go on to the next page a little bit, so she's still explaining, explaining, but here, she's done. And she's ready to move to her second subtopic. Her second subtopic was called um, Inside and Outside. And I asked her, you know, as somebody who has never really played soccer, I've watched a lot of it, but I don't play myself, that it, calling it Inside Outside might be um, a struggle for them to understand what you're saying. So what exactly is the purpose of Inside and Outside? And she said, well, that's a move that helps confuse your opponents. So I said, oh, well, that would be a great way to start talking about inside versus outside and what that means with the ball. When you're starting your second subtopic, you're starting a new paragraph. So you're dropping down to the next line, still skipping lines, but I'm indenting. 
just like I indented here, I left a little bit of a space between this red line and where I started, about three finger spaces. So we're gonna start here, and this time we're gonna start with a question to make it a little different. So this time I said, do you know how to confuse your opponent? Then I'm setting up my reader to think, ooh, yeah, I don't, I want to know what you're going to tell me. I think I know, but maybe you have another idea I've never thought of. Then she can go into explaining her subtopic inside versus outside. You're going to do this for all three of your subtopics today. Your three subtopics need to be completed before lamp time. If you don't have time to finish, you're going to finish it before you get to go to lamp time. You'll be finishing it in Miss Austin's room. Please use your time wisely. Use our wonderful substitute for help. Ask her about spelling if you're not sure. Ask her about words. Maybe there's a word you can't think of. You don't know what something is called and she can help you with that. Use your dictionaries, use your thesaurus, use everything that you have access to. You still have your videos that you created. You have your plan written out on your graphic organizer. Use what you have and do your best. I want to challenge you to add a compound sentence somewhere in your writing. Have you already written two sentences that you could actually combine with a comma and a fanboy? Or can you write a sentence today that you haven't written yet that will turn into a compound sentence? Two ideas that you can put together with one of our fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Good luck today. I can't wait to see what you produce, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye.